for five minutes. Um, thank you, Chairman Black, and uh, thanks to all our witnesses for being here with us today. Um, if you knew nothing else about the Affordable Care Act, all you'd need to do is read the title of today's hearing to understand that it's brazenly partisan. Um, the majority wants to talk about the effects of the ACA, so let's talk about them. Um, one effect is that people don't go bankrupt when they get sick anymore. Um, that sounds like a pretty good outcome to me. Um, more than 120 million Americans with pre-existing conditions are no longer denied coverage. Young adults can stay on their parents' plans till they're 26. And over 10 million seniors have received help with their prescription drug payments. And all insurance plans are required to cover preventative services at no cost. This is especially critical for women. Each year, this helps 55 million women save more than $1.4 billion on birth control. Many of my friends from across the aisle have said they want to keep the good parts and just get rid of the bad. So what are we really doing here? Um, for years, my colleagues and I have offered proposals to strengthen the ACA and were turned away each time. I have a bill to make it easier for small businesses pr to provide coverage for their workers, for instance, and yet folks don't want to talk about that. They just want to talk about repeal. So now we know the effects of the ACA, which was the purpose of the hearing today. So let's talk about the effects of repeal. Um, you're going to hear a lot of numbers thrown around today, and it's easy to get lost in the statistics and forget that this is about people. Um, what's important to remember is repealing the ACA hurts real people across the country in profound ways. It means taking away health coverage for 30 million Americans. It means seniors will have to pay more for critical prescription drugs. And it means women will once again be, not, be denied coverage simply for being a woman. It also means a great deal to people like Sue Black. Sue is a public school teacher from my district who was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer at the age of 47. Five years later, she received a short but terrifying letter from her insurance company. In four sentences, it said she had exhausted three quarters of her lifetime benefit limit. Um, thankfully, the Affordable Care Act banned lifetime caps on coverage. And she's not the only one. In the past few weeks, my office has been flooded with stories from constituents describing how the Affordable Care Act saved their life or the lives of their loved ones. And meanwhile, the Republican plan for health care in America is repeal the Affordable Care Act and then just trust us. I think our constituents deserve better than to have their health coverage taken away with no plan for what comes next. Um, Ms. Bloomberg, I wondered in your opinion, is there a segment of the population that would benefit from repealing the Affordable Care Act without a replacement plan in place? You know, folks who do not want to purchase health insurance coverage and are subject to a mandate penalty as a consequence of uh, the act under that sort of repeal through reconciliation, they would have um, less penalty to pay. The problem is, is that there would be such a huge loss of insurance coverage for a much larger percentage of the population. The, the uncompensated care burdens would increase so much on health care providers and on state governments that I think that would be far outweighed. I, otherwise, I can't really come up with people who are going to be benefiting as a consequence. And can you describe the effects on children if the Affordable Care Act were, were repealed? We, by our estimates, roughly 4 million children would lose health insurance coverage. Some of these are covered, children are covered with their families through the marketplaces with financial assistance. Others will lose their coverage because what we know from a lot of experience with the Medicaid system and with the ACA is that when adults know that they can have um, assistance in getting coverage, they find out when they go to enroll that their children are eligible for CHIP. Uh, as well, and so if the parents know they can't get care coverage and they don't go seeking it, then their children won't end up getting insured as well. Thank you. And um, we keep hearing um, from my colleagues on the other side of the aisle how the Affordable Care Act is going to collapse, um, but hasn't enrollment been growing, especially right now, and isn't the real threat right now the promise of repeal? Absolutely. The repeal without replacement is uh, is 
a recipe for a death spiral. And right now, the Affordable Care Act, as I said, has some areas in which there has been high premiums and that we have some policy strategies that should be put in place to address them. But by and large, it's being successful at increasing coverage, increasing access, and improving affordability. Thank you. I yield back, Madam Chair. General